What up, fam? Hey, man, guess what? You want to learn how or see how or watch how I make R&B music or beats or songs, or arrangement, whatever? Stay tuned. Stick with this video and check me out, man. What up, what up, what up, world? It's your boy, Charles, Cherokee Production, Cherokee Home Studio YouTube channel. All right, so um, just want to go over one thing I'm doing. I'm doing this, like, little custom track for um, a good artist that I just started working with, so looking forward to uh, doing some good work with her. Uh, this is a custom track she asked me um, to make um, in the vibe of... A, tr a song that she heard was really cool. It was kind of like a um, one of those plug songs, guitar, um, you know, and vocals. But I might, I decided I want to add a little more than just guitar and vocals just to make it a little bit different, spice it up, but keep it in that same element in that same feel. Okay, so um, I started to make this track in Reason. So let me uh, bring this up a little bit. I wanted to make this track and reason. I wanted to do a few things. So I already started. So I want to talk about um, midi packs. Um, I know everybody got their little thing about midi packs and, you know, a little spill. Oh, use midi packs here and there. You know what? It doesn't matter what you use. You, just, you make a good song, you make a good song. It's cool. I think it's an art in itself when you use things like that, loops and midi packs, and alter them and make it your own and just make it different or whatever. You know, how however you come up with um, your arrangement, uh, the particular production that you're working with. So I'm all down for that. I'm all game for that. Um, even people that play instruments, I play instruments, keyboards, uh, but I still use loops too. I use MIDI packs too, because, you know, I go through producer block and we all do, but, you know, to each his own, if you feel that MIDI packs are, they suck here and then that's cool. I respect you. Uh, but I don't see a problem with it, in my opinion. So I used a MIDI pack from the Unison MIDI pack, um, the R&B um, MIDI pack from Unison. And I tried this little uh, chord progression, which is right here, which you would see in the chorus. So I'm going to play it in the core of the block um, production that I'm doing in Reason. Okay, let's take a look at this. So this is the chord progression. And the reason, again, I wanted to use a guitar to for this MIDI pack, particular MIDI pack. All right, now, I just want to say something. If you look at this progression here, you see this is like a... a, a it has a... Let's see what we got here. Wait one second. So we only have like, you know, little four bars of a little progression. Here, I think this is in the key of D minor. Um, and I'm using the guitar, right? Now, one thing that I want to say when dealing with guitars, um, I noticed, and I used to do this a long time ago until I got myself educated on it. You want to make yourself sound like a real guitar as much as you can. And I'm not saying like the sound of the guitar, but along how it's being played. So, um, some people will play the guitar like they're playing a piano. And that's not how a guitar is played. When a guitar is played, it's like a strum, you know, from whatever root note is hitting in, on, in the third or fourth and sixth or whatever. So um, 
you would have to do it like that. And the cool way I do it, I use this progression from the MIDI uh, R&B chord pack. And what I did was I took um, all the other notes and I, you know, made them behind itself to make it seem like a strum. If I would have um, put them together as it came, like as if it was being played on the piano, it would it would just wouldn't sound right. It wouldn't be realistic, you know. So those are things you kind of have to think about when you're dealing with different instruments. Everything can't be played like you would play it on the piano. You just think of that how that instrument is being played, and you're gonna try to emulate that as best you could. All right, so this is why it sounds like this, like a strum. So just trying to get it as natural as possible. And I'll probably um, go and adjust the velocities and change the velocities because the velocities are not going to be the same as you um, do it on a guitar. So you got to think about those things and try to make it as real as possible. Okay. So that is the chord progression of the MIDI chord packs uh, that's made by um, Unison, which is a great, cool, a uh, little company I like out there uh, doing some great and big things. And there's some other ones I like out there. I like the, the Nico as well. So um, got some really good stuff out there, guys, for, you know, when you get in that producer's block, don't be ashamed. Just use it, check it out, and you're good to go. All right, so I'm going to play this as a whole. This is what I'm working with so far. Okay, now this is my chorus, but I'm still adding a few things to to build up my chorus. Um, and I'm going to go to, I did a pre-core, as you can hear here as well. Let's check out what the pre-core will sound like. All right, now let's go over this and I'll just show you the, instru the instruments and what I'm using. All right, so obviously we're using the MIDI chord pack. We already went over that. Um, there's another strum that I'm using. I just copied from the MIDI chord pack and I used the harp and layered it with the layered it with the guitars, and it simply sounds like this. So that's just like a little harp that's being strummed. Um, the next thing what I did was another strum I did, and it's kind of like uh, like I arpeggiated a little bit. And, you know, just to give it a little feel, uh, the next instrument that I used was a whirly um, electric piano. So I used that in C minor. And guess what? Let me tell you what else I did. I didn't actually play this. I just used this right here. Guys, this reason is cool. You can use this thing called the um, the player. And for this particular one, I did for the, um, the Rhodes, which is this. And if you look here, you will see the player, uh, scales and chords. And I put it in D minor. And I simply just found the progression that found, I mean, sounded good and adjusted the way I want to adjust. And I probably go adjust it to, you know, sound even different depending on what I'm feeling uh, throughout the production. And that's it. This is all I'm using. You know, I didn't even play it, although I could have played it, but, you know, I want to, I'm trying to get this fast and move quick so it allows me to um, be efficient so I can do it this way. So it doesn't matter how I get this thing done as long as I get it done. All right. So, that's another cool thing, the skills and chords that you can use. You can, you know, bring all these things together and just be very creative, okay? All right, so let's go back to the, um, the song board or the editing or the sequencer. Um, so we heard the whirly, and here I use some more arpeggiated stuff um, uh, by Exo in Reason. 
And this is what this instrument sounds like. A synth. Nothing big, just simple. And what I have here, and this is from the output arcade, this sample that I use. And all I did was listen to a few guitars in arcade and I seen the sample that I like and I just matched, matched it with the um, key that I'm playing in. And it automatically syncs up with my tempo in my host DAW, which is uh, Reason 11. So let's check out the next one, which is another sample that is being played by Output's arcade um, sample um, synth or sample collection. And that's all. I just used a few things to accompany the other uh, instruments or other tracks in, in the production. And the next thing I just used, just some drums, little trap drums, just a little beat here. Nothing too hard, just a, a slow little groove. So that's pretty much it. That's all I did, just keeping it simple so far. And this is what it sounds like, again, all together in unison. So let's go next to the verse. So I, I started working on the verse part, and I only got um, two things that I was doing on here. Let's see what this is right here. Obviously, this is the harp, I think. And it's just a complimenting this guitar right here. And this, again, this is by Arcade, another guitar sample that I use and match it up with the tempo and it fits right where I need it well with this, um, um, the Celtic Harp um, patch from Reason. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to add a, a, a rhythm to this, but I'm going to use my cajon. I'm going to play this live because I want that cajon feel in the verse. So I'm just really feeling that. So I'm just designing this thing as I go. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here in uh, to my core. All right, let's take this off solo. And I'm going to add some more um, drum instruments, maybe a hi-hat. Not too much, because I want to keep things simple. So I'll do that and I normally would, let's see what we got here. So I'll come up with a rhythm that I want to use. Okay, okay, what's up, what's up? I'm in my next little phase. I'm actually about to record the cajon. I have uh, just one mic hooked up to the cajon. And I'm going to record it in, record the verse rhythm in, use that as my little sort of drum thing. I got on shades because these lights are kind of bright <laughs> and it's in my eyes. So, and I want to look a little bit cool. So, you know, so yeah. So I'm about to record this cajon and dive in and check it out, you know. So let me hit record and let me do my thing.
Okay, so I recorded my cajon part in, and let's move inside the doll and let's see what it sounds like inside the doll. Okay, what's up, what's up? All right, I just want to go over a few things. Let's go over our um, patterns, how I came up with the patterns. I'm just going to just run you through uh, how I created the pattern. Um, I'm using Reason 11. And I'm using the blocks um, sequencing uh, pattern mode. And if you don't know about that in Reason, definitely check that out. Oops, sorry. Uh, it will definitely uh, give you an explanation of what blocks is <laughs> on Reason. All right, so let's go ahead and dev in. So um, I'm I did a pre core right here, and here is a pre core of few instruments that we talked about earlier that I use. So I came up with this and I'll play it and let you hear it. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and roll this on up. All right, let's roll the sequence up a little bit. All right, cool. So let's check this out. <clears throat> Okay, okay. Um, so I feel I want something else in there um, because it's a pre-core. And once it once the verse transition into the pre-core, I just want a little more push in there, a little more umph in there. So I'm gonna add some um, stuff, some stuff in there. Um, this stuff is called probably like a hit from an orchestral drum or something like that. I don't know yet. Let me see where do I have that on any of my tracks. Okay, let's check this out. Verse. It's just like boom, boom. I don't see any of those on there. I wonder did I delete them by mistake. Uh, let's go to song. Okay, so I do have them in a the song. All right, got it, got it. Okay, so I'm going to go to my back to blocks. And let's, let's start with the intro pattern first. This is my intro pattern. That's the intro. Let's go to the verse pattern. All right, as you can see here, I'm going to play it. Let me, let me solo it. This is the cone I recorded earlier. And I actually use this mic right here. I actually did a class on this mic too. This mic here, this bad baby here. Uh, let me open it up. It's called the ECM 87 by Gage Audio. And you can check out that video. It's this bad baby right here. It's like a U87-ish sounding mic. So I did that. I recorded with this mic to um but I recorded the whole cajon the slap and the hit or the kick sort of sounding like with with this mic actually what I really want I want to get another one of those mics and I want to start um recording in stereo a stereo pattern so what I really want to do with that uh cajon I wanted to record it like in a stereo pattern to where it sounds big but I know other ways to get that and make that happen. So um, in the mix, when I start mixing this thing, it will sound even more different, more bigger, more wider, more spacious. So yeah, ECM8, made by Gage Audio. Check that out. 
Big up to Gauge Audio. All right, now let's go back to the patterns. Um, again, um, big up to Unison MIDI chord packs. I use one of the Unison R&B MIDI chord packs, and I just like I did it for the guitar. And like I said, I made the guitar sound like a guitar, not just like a keyboard or something. You know, you have to put the strum in there to make it sound like a strum because that's how our, our guitars play the guitar. So. That being said, let's go ahead and go on to the next pattern, which is the pre-core, which we already heard, and which I want to do something to the pre-core. So while we hear, okay, that's the second. While we hear, um, I am going to record in some of the hits. So let's play this one more time. And I'm gonna see what hit I wanna use. Okay. All right, I got what I want to do. See, that it adds a little more oomph to it, like, you know, in that pre-core when it transitioned in, and you'll see what I'm talking about as when we go to the song pattern mode. So let's go ahead and record this in. Let's tighten up a little bit, a little quantization. You don't need too much of it. Okay, so let's hear it. So I step back here, step back here in the core chorus, and um. What I did was, well, let me just play it from before I added the drum layer in the chorus. So let me mute this part of the kick. And it sounded like this. Okay, you can hear the kick, but it's kind of like under everything a little bit, like a little bit soft, just the low end, obviously. But I still want to keep that. So what I did was I added another kick, and that's what that was more to give it more of the um, attack or um, you know the transient push through. So when you hear this, you hear the difference, and I can hear the kick a little more through the mix as it cut through. So again, that's it. I just added that other kick to it, and I can adjust it um, in the mix if I the levels to um, blend them in to get a nice even tone. So yeah, again, those small little things that you can do um, to build a song. So the next thing what we're gonna do, we're gonna go in the song mode in the next slide, and we're just gonna keep going till we finish and adding things here maybe. And that's it. Once that's done, then I'll take it to the mixing stage and boom, that'll be it. All right, guys, I'll see you to the next stage. Peace. Or the next slide or the next video. No, I'm just playing go. <laughs> okay, so we're back in the song sequencer mode. And I just want to show you some more things as I progress on um, arranging and building to the song. So... We left off at the chorus, 
of the song structure, right? But as it was going, and I copy and paste the second verse, which was the same as the first verse, obviously, um, into the, after the first chorus, right? But when it transitioned over to the verse, it just didn't sound right. It just, it was kind of ugly. It didn't make any sense. But you know what? Let me um, do something. Let me get back into there and show you what it sound like before I did those changes. All right. Now, this is the chorus. See, it just jumps right in the first verse without giving, without taking you easily, smoothly in back into the second verse. I'm sorry. It jumps back into the second verse without easily transitioning or smoothly changing into the first verse. It just jumped right in like, boom, like, okay, that is not going to work. So what I had to do was I had to make it fit or make a transition in there. So watch how I did this. So I'm going to um, chop a little bit of this awesome. And watch the chorus. But we still got that blank space, you know. Oh, that could be okay in some cases, but I want to make it more interesting. Watch this. Okay, let's try it now. See how smooth that transition into the second verse, and we can even glorify it even more. Watch this. Let me take a listen. Now, don't that make much more sense to the ears as it's smoothly transitioning into the verse instead of just jumping boom right into the second verse without giving any warning or just smoothly take me there you know nicely and kindly you know so i wanted to show that because if a lot of you may arrange and when you're arranging like that and you can't figure out how to make it sink in so it, it's just a little small things guys it's just the small little things that you do it's not nothing big. You just, it's like a palette. You're painting, you know, you, you know what you're going to do next as you go through, you know, you don't know right then because you haven't built the foundation, but once the foundation has been uh, created, then everything will start coming together instead of falling apart. So that's what I want to show you guys in this sequencing song mode. And I am going to continue on with the song and finish up and add more things here and there and we'll hear the finished product and then I'll mix it and then you will hear the finished product with the mix and hopefully if the artist liked this new song she will add her vocals and then we'll see what it sounds like with the vocals in another video all right guys so I just wanted to share that with you hope you enjoyed this video um be looking out for the um final mix which you will see in the link below the video please subscribe uh hit that alert button like comment if you like it or dislike it don't matter just do it for me please pretty please <laughs> yeah so go ahead and do that so you can get more of the cool videos that i make with different genres and just whatever we just have some fun you know i like to have fun make this thing fun this is what it's all about having fun um you know, sharing some things what I may know. And then, you know, share some things what you guys may know. I love to hear from you guys. Comment, man. You know, let's talk. Let's build. Um, share some things. Um, let's build us a little smaller community of tracking. Who knows? So, um, again, guys, have a good one. Mm -hmm.